there are a lot of estimates out there, uh, you know, on the order of three to six thousand dollars of savings because there are 30 or 40 percent fewer components in an electric vehicle. It's much easier to maintain. And because a lot of the components are electronic and therefore they're run by digital devices, i.e. semiconductor chips and other hardware that are embedded in the vehicle, it's, a, it's much easier for these companies to push out software upgrades, software improvements, and to monitor if a part in the vehicle is going to fail. All of that pre presents savings for the owner. We're ramping up this tango of supply and demand. Uh, as more EVs become available, we fill up our factories producing these vehicles and they're able to then lower the cost per unit of producing those. I, I love this myth because it is a little bit nerve-wracking if you've never owned one of these EVs and you know that, gosh, I've got to get to a charging station or I'm going to get stuck on the road. That's, that does generate anxiety. I can feel that. My palms are sweating right now. Uh, what's interesting, though, is that most of these batteries now have a range of up to 300 miles before they have to have another fill up or charge. EVs are less harmful for the environment over their lifetime as compared to gasoline powered vehicles. I did a paper with an incredible graduate student at the University of Michigan where we measured life cycle emissions of going from, you know, pretty much no electric vehicles in the U.S. a few years ago to getting to 100% uh, EV sales by 2035. And the paper did show that from a life cycle, so the whole lifetime of these vehicles, we did see a significant increase in the improvement, or I should say reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. It is the case that many states still have coal-fired you know, electric utility plants. And we are still on a wave of decarbonizing aggressively the electric grid. Cleaning up the grid goes hand in hand with pivoting toward electric vehicles. You may be aware that Ford Motor Company did uh, unveil its Mach-E, which is an electric kind of what we call crossover vehicle. And that electric vehicle is pricing very attractively, you know, starting uh, out around $35,000, $40,000. Um, the Chevy Bolt is also a very attractive price. Point. You may have seen Elon Musk announce that Tesla is driving toward uh, pricing an attractive EV around $25,000 by 2023. And again, I think if we future this, what we're going to see are more and more vehicles, electric vehicles in an affordable range. And I will say again, as we scale up, 
and the and EVs become mainstream, then we'll start to see used electric vehicles that are very attractive. We have to have absolutely a vital growing used electric vehicle market. As a percent of all EVs on the road, the number of uh, consequences associated with fires has been a relatively low percentage. Not everybody can make electric vehicles. You have to have the know-how, the experience, and also have gone through a significant amount of testing and meeting uh, our Department of Transportation safety requirements to put these electric vehicles on the road. It's an important consideration and one that the Department of Transportation has been uh, really emphasizing, moving up, making sure that they've got very sound and safe uh, regulations in place to prevent any risk associated with uh, battery fires. You know, the EV transition is coming, whether we like it or not, everybody has, you know, really pretty much shown quite clearly that it's a better technology. It is safer. And as we go to electric vehicles, the electronics in the vehicle can offer up much more driver safety and prevention of accidents compared to a gasoline powered vehicle. And so all of that combined with making sure we have growing jobs in the industry and we meet the climate challenge. It just all fits together to secure kind of the future for generations to come.